how to 10x your giving. So today, that's what I'm here to share with you, a bigger, bolder way to give, a way to 10x your giving over your lifetime. So instead of giving $100,000 over your lifetime, which is pretty awesome anyways, imagine if you could turn that $100,000 into a million dollars of giving. Imagine how much impact you could have on the causes and charities, the churches, the people you care about, if you could 10x your charitable giving. That's what we're talking about today. My name is Ashley Michike. I'm the CEO of True North Retirement Advisors, where we specialize in helping business owners reach their personal and business financial goals. We help you avoid costly missteps and do way more than manage your investment portfolio. One of those things that we do and we love working with clients with is strategizing with them on their charitable giving. We love working with clients that are charitable and we want to help them give as much as possible, be as generous as possible um, to the causes that they care most deeply about. Growing up, uh, we went to church and the extent of my charity was putting some money in the collection basket at church every week, you know, five bucks or something. Uh, and into adulthood, I, I've never been intentional about my giving and how I give, although I've always wanted to do that because I always feel like, gosh, I'm, you know, I'm not giving enough, I'm not doing enough. Um, and so I've really struggled with this over the last few years, wanting to give more, but also being pulled in different directions. So it, it was really random. You know, I might go to a charity golf tournament or you go to one of those charity auctions and they do the paddle raise. That's my favorite part, the paddle raise, because you get like, you know, the the very generous, like showy people who initially were like, all right, who's gonna give $10,000? And they're like, yeah. Meanwhile, I'm over here and I'm waiting for like, how low are they gonna go? You get to 100, okay, can I? No, no, they're gonna go to 50. Okay, and then they're at 50 and it's like, eh, oh, they're gonna go 25, okay, 10? And I'm like nudging my husband, like, should I, should I? Like, it's $25. Seeing how low they go with the paddle is not a good giving strategy. The problem with my own giving, and, and I think what I see among a lot of other people that I talk to, because interestingly enough, we don't really talk about this a lot. It's very taboo to talk about like how generous you are or how much you're giving. Nobody really knows you know, uh, how much other people are, are giving. But I'm in a very unique position where I see line items in people's budgets so I can see exactly what they're giving. And we have conversations like this all the time. You know, um, what, are, what are you currently doing? What do you care deeply about? What are the causes that you care about? How much are you contributing right now? What do you want that to look like in the future? Like these are all things that are regular conversations with clients. So it comes up all the time where I get to really see what people are giving. And what I see by and large with people who aren't giving uh, a lot, it's a lot of times it's because there's this scarcity mindset. Like if I give generously, if I just don't, I just, I'm going to give out of my excess, you know, I'm not going to um, give boldly or, or have any planned giving in place. I just give randomly here or there. Um, it's not really a good strategy. And I, I think most of us, you know, we are very generous people. We want to do more, but we don't. And I think a big reason why is because A, we don't plan for it. We don't say, okay, every, it's, it's a, just like groceries, just like gas, it's not a line item in our budget. And um, the other reason why is, you know, there's a scarcity mindset. So we think if I give, I'm not going to have enough because as soon as that money leaves, it's gone. And so um, there's that as well. But the clients that I see that are very generous, they don't have that scarcity mindset. And they're able to give freely and they enjoy it and it brings them fulfillment. 
Over the last five years or so, my husband and I have become a lot more intentional with our giving. So instead of a random like GoFundMe or a paddle raise at an auction or um, you know an entry into a golf tournament where it doesn't really feel like giving because I'm having a good time anyways. Um, but instead of giving randomly, we, we give monthly and we choose here are the causes that we're going to support and here's the amount that we've budgeted for that and here's what we're going to give every single month to these causes. And actually what it does, it, other than just allowing us to give more because we're more intentional about it, but what it also allows you to do that's so powerful is it allows you to say no to a lot of the random stuff that you don't really you're not really, I mean, yeah, you care maybe in the moment, but like you're really not passionate about it. So like if I'm not into like saving the gophers and someone comes to my door and I'm like, I hear this heart wrenching story about gophers and I really want to contribute. And yes, I will fund your GoFundMe, but no, no, I can't. My charitable giving is spoken for for the month. The key is you have to be intentional about your giving. So when you give to charity, you actually have two options. One is you just give directly to charity, you know, every month, every year, random times, you just, you know, write checks to charity or uh, raise that paddle at the uh, auction that you're going to. Um, but the other way to invest and to give charitably is a, through with a more longer term planning focus is a donor advised fund. So if you haven't heard of a donor advised fund, what it is, is a, it's a way for you to set up an account um, just like you would a regular investment account and you make your charitable contributions directly to that account. So it allows you, instead of giving directly to charity, you give into this bucket. And you can give monthly, you can give when you have these big windfalls, and then you decide how and when and who gets those contributions. Okay, so I'm just going to use a simple example with nice round numbers that we can all grab onto. So, uh, business owner takes ten thousand, or excuse me, business owner takes a hundred thousand dollars from the sale of the business, and puts that into a donor advised fund. And this business owner never contributes to this account ever again. And so I'm going to assume nice round numbers. It grows at ten percent a year. It grows ten percent year in year out every year. If this happens, and, and let's say he makes no distributions for chari to charity over this time, so you do have control. Uh, the way the tax laws are currently written, you do have control over the timing of the distributions from the account to various charities. So you retain a lot of control over how and when that money gets dispersed, which is extremely attractive as well. Okay, so if the assets in that account, remember his original $100,000 investment, if they grow at 10% a year, after 10 years, he's going to have uh, $259,000 in that account. After 20 years, he's going to have $672,000 in that account. And at 25 years, so he was 60 when he sold his business and retired, now at 85 years old, he has over a million dollars in this donor advised fund, never contributing it to again if it grew at 10% a year. He has 10 x his amount that he will be able to disperse to charities over that 25 year time period. Absolutely incredible. Think of the impact you can have when you give a million dollars instead of a hundred thousand dollars to charity. It's absolutely amazing. When you sell the business, you may want to give a substantial amount of money to charity or your church or some other, you know, some cause that you care about, but you may not necessarily know who or what. And so 
the donor advised fund is really powerful in that it allows you to kind of figure that out later. Not only did he 10x his giving, but he did it in a very tax efficient way because in that year, that all important year when he sold his business and probably paid a lot of taxes to Uncle Sam, $100,000 of that that went into that donor advised fund was excluded from his taxable income for the year. Let's say you're 50 years old right now and you plan to retire at age 65. So you're gonna give $10,000 every year for the next 15 years. That's $150,000 that you're gonna to give to charity. You have two options. One is you could make that contribution directly to a charity or a number of charities. Or two, you could make that contribution to a donor advised fund and allow that to grow for you and work for you. But here's how you can also 10X your planned annual giving. Um, so from age 50 to 65, you contribute $10,000 a year. So over that 15 year time frame, you've contributed $150,000. And like a lot of people who are retired, things change when you retire, right? You are all of a sudden living on a very fixed amount of assets, fixed amount of income a lot of times, and so there isn't as much wiggle room. So I'm gonna assume in this example that you actually stop contributing to your donor advised fund at age 65 when you retire. So assuming a 10% 10, 10 growth rate over that time, what you ended up with at the end of those 15 years your original contributions of 150, but if it grows at 10%, you actually ended up with $391,000 in that donor advised fund that you can then disperse to charity over your retirement years. That it just tickles me thinking about that. $391,000 from $150,000 in contributions. But here's where it gets even juicier. Now, when you're retired, you're gonna start those payouts to charities. If you're going to use average returns, you can plug in the numbers and say, okay, if this grows 10% a year, what can I distribute every year to charity so that I run out by my 90th birthday or you know, you know, whatever you want to do. So if you do the math, if you add that up, so you made $150,000 in your original contribution, but your distributions to charity from the account, if it grew at an average of 10% a year, was $972,000. Okay, that's what living a legacy is all about, being so intentional about your giving. And imagine, like not just the impact that you could have, but you actually get to see the results of what you're doing. You know, you can, not just leaving it to your estate and like hoping that they use it how you want, you actually see the impact. You see the building being built. You see the people being fed. You get to experience all those things that your contributions are helping to make possible. And because you get to do it in a much bigger way than you might already would, than you otherwise would have, regardless of your assets, regardless of your income, when you use a donor advised fund and it grows for you over time, you're able to multiply your giving and give so much more than you otherwise would have been able to. So my challenge to you today is to get out of your scarcity mindset. Okay, I know this is really hard to do. It's really hard for me to do. And it's something that I still struggle with all the time is making sure that, you know, there is enough and, and not being confident that if I give more boldly that there will be enough. But if with a little planning and getting out of that scarcity mindset, you can have a tremendous impact over your lifetime of the causes and the people and what you care about most in this world. So if you're like me and you've been wanting to do more, to be more, to grow more, to live a more fulfilled life and see the world around you improve as a result, please take a step, get out of your comfort zone, set up a donor advised fund. You know what? It only takes five thousand dollars to set up a fund. I want to leave you with this story about John Rockefeller. So um, I, when I was doing some research for this video, I was looking up some of the larger foundations and just looking at some of the names, a lot of which you might recognize. And um, one of those names is John Rockefeller. So John Rockefeller, he died 81 years ago. 
1937. So he died. He's been dead for a lifetime. So his foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation, in 2013 alone, his foundation gave $137 million just in that one year to various causes. $137 million in one year alone. So a lifetime after his death, his legacy lives on. And to date, it is estimated that the Rockefeller Foundation has given $17 billion, with a B, billion dollars to improve the lives of people all around the world. Now, that is a legacy. So whether you have $5,000 or $50 million, consider a donor-advised fund for your planned giving so you can 10x your lifetime giving. Thanks for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel. If you have questions about your specific situation, let's hop on a call. 15 minutes, I can answer some questions for you about donor advised funds, what might be appropriate for you. If you have specific assets where you're not sure if they qualify um, for a contribution to a donor advised fund, I can help. So there's a, a calendar link below. You can click on that link and schedule a time to uh, speak with me. It'll give you access to my calendar and you can set up a time that's convenient for you. <laughs> I would try one more time. Do no, I want my face to be at the camp? Okay, dude. How is it? I am to 10 extra year giving. Okay, I might need to stop for a little while because I think my neighbor is growly. It's all about me. Doesn't she realize I'm trying to record a video right now? Her and the dog are barking at each other.